I'm Isaiah, and this is Decomposed. All right, so yeah, there were other animation studios in the 1920s and 1930s. And when you think about other animation studios besides Disney, you probably think of Warner Brothers, or you might think of MGM with Tom and Jerry. But around the time of Steamboat Willie and after, there was only one true competition for Disney, one rival, and that was Fleischer Studios. And what makes this story so compelling is that Max Fleischer and Walt Disney are almost two sides of the same coin. They are so similar to each other and yet such polar opposites. I already mentioned that both men wore a mustache, and if the similarities only ended there, it would still be incredible. But it goes far beyond that. Both men worked closely with their brothers to form the animation studios. Both men rose out of obscurity. Both men were passionate about animation. Both men were artists. And both men utilized music in ways no one ever imagined. Both men were innovators. Both men were storytellers. Both men were geniuses. But as similar as they were, the contrast between them is what sets these two studios apart and what established a rivalry between the Disney Studios and the Fleischer Studios that would last throughout the 1930s. First off, it starts with their background, the way they were raised. Walt Disney was raised on a farm in Marceline, Missouri. The early Mickey Mouse cartoons were all set on a barnyard. Galloping Gaucho playing crazy, the barn dance. Every time Walt made a story, he went with what he knew, what was familiar from his childhood, farmland. Meanwhile, the Fleischer cartoons were urban. They were set in the city, the gritty, dirty, scandalous city and you get the sense when you're watching them that these are stories being told through the eyes of an immigrant. Max Fleischer's introduction to America was very far from the farmlands of Marceline that Disney saw. His first experience in America was on Ellis Island whenever he was just four years old, immigrating from Poland. And it's that Jewish immigrant story that really sets Fleischer Studios apart. In the 1880s, whenever Max Fleischer immigrated to America, prospects for Jewish immigrants were pretty low. Really, the only way you could make money as a Jewish immigrant was finding scrap metal, selling furs or gloves, or becoming a tailor, which is what Max's father did. In fact, he opened up a tailor shop inside Manhattan. Um, right actually where Rockefeller Center is today. And those prospects were low because overwhelmingly America was not a welcoming place to immigrants. Now Jewish immigrants believed that the American dream was meant for them as much as it was meant for anybody else. And yet the prospects for them to find and achieve that dream were very limited. Until the rise of the motion picture industry. While most Americans were viewing motion pictures as a novelty act, many of the Jewish Americans saw an opportunity to advance themselves beyond the humble state that they had been forced to live in. For these men, Hollywood would be the gate through which they would enter into the promised land of the American dream. And so you have the Taylor's son, Max Fleischer, who was a hardworking, good student in New York City. He was also an artist. 
He got a job working for the Scientific American magazine. And one day, his boss called him into his office and said, you know, I went and saw these animated cartoons last night. And I got to tell you, I think you could do better. So Max went and he watched the animation. He watched cartoons and he had to agree. He could definitely do better. Now, Max Fleischer was an inventor, and he came up with an idea. What if you could film a person acting and then project each frame of that film in such a way that you could trace it onto paper? Your drawings would perfectly mimic the lifelike action of the person you'd filmed. So this invention was called the rotoscope, and to show that it could actually work, Max filmed his brother Dave dancing around in a clown costume. Then Max spent a year meticulously drawing frame by frame a cartoon of this dancing clown. That cartoon he called Out of the Inkwell. It was the first Fleischer cartoon, and when people saw it, they were blown away. It was lifelike. You can watch it now, and it's still impressive. The animation is unlike anything else from that time, or even today, really. So Max was making cartoons that were incredible. They were better than anybody else's, but he still needed to find a distributor. And he found one in a lady named Margaret J. Winkler. This name is significant because she would later also be the distributor for Walt Disney. And this is the first of many instances where Disney found himself in Max Fleischer's shadow. 